Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ray. I'm a detransition male. And today I'm going to be talking about, you know, whether or not I detransition because society is, you know, in some respects intolerant or prejudiced against trans people. And because um, because you often hear this idea that, well, if you trans if you detransition because of society being intolerant of trans people, then you know, the problem isn't necessarily with being trans, the problem is with society. So we don't need to change trans people, we need to change, um, you know, society. And then there would be far less detransitioners. And, you know, I, I want to preface this conversation by saying I'm not speaking about other detransitioners, I'm not speaking about, you know, other trans people, I'm only speaking about my own experiences so i'm not extrapolating from my experiences and you know generalizing to other trans people or d or d trans people i'm only speaking about my own life um and i think it's a little more complicated than simply saying society is intolerant of trans identity because in my experience it wasn't necessarily that society was intolerant of transness per se, it was more so intolerant of the very concept of males being feminine. Um, particularly if you were not feminine from a kind of like um, young age, because you know, there are some males who are basically uh, intrinsically feminine in their mannerisms from a very young age. Whereas for me, like, you know, I, I was not a uh, overly effeminate child, even though I had a predilection for cross-dressing from a young age. But that cross-dressing was more like a secretive behavior of just, you know, donning these, you know, feminine clothing and not necessarily, you know, acting like a overly effeminate child. Um, but when I started my transition, I started, you know, consciously imitating femininity um, in order to pass. And, and, and that's the sort of the key concept of, you know, donning femininity, imitating femininity consciously in order to learn how to pass more. I distinctly remember, you know, when I was early in my, my transition, very early, I was watching RuPaul's Drag Race of all things. And, you know, watching these gay males, um, you know, and, and how their mannerisms and how they imitated, imitated femininity. And it's kind of like an over the top caricature. But nevertheless, you know, they were sort of drawing on some sort of like, you know, uh, key sort of differences in, you know, feminine mannerisms versus masculine mannerisms. And they sort of like take that over the top, but nevertheless, if I, I studied that and I studied, you know, women and femininity, you know, very keenly. And, and, and I started like consciously practicing and imitating that femininity in order to pass because I was not naturally feminine. Um, so I, I remember, for example, you know, looking up YouTube videos on how men walk versus how women walk. And, you know, men sort of walk in this sort of side to side shuffle, whereas women put their legs kind of like, like they're walking on like a straight line and they kind of like swing their hips back and forth. So I started like literally practicing, practicing this and consciously changing how I held myself and, you know, through you know, effort and practice, I feminized my mannerisms and my behavior through a conscious, deliberate process of imitation of femininity. Because my goal was to pass better, and because that femininity did not come intrinsic to me, I had to study it consciously, and then over time, that sort of, you know, conscious study of femininity became internalized. Um, and I say all this because, you know, even though I was never like, you know, 100% passing, I, I was like, you know, kind of like 
a clockable trans feminine person. Like I sort of kind of semi pass, but I was very clockable, but you know, I nevertheless, you know, approximated some degree of femininity to the best of my ability. Um, you know, I started, for example, with like my voice, you know, I started, you know, putting more intonation and upswing on my voice and started, you know, changing the the the, the dynamics and intonations in my speech patterns in order to consciously imitate fifth in order to imitate femininity. Um, you know, rather than speaking in a very monotone voice, I, you know, added like upswing and dynamics and stuff like this. Um, so like, and I, I like say all this because, you know, as a non-passing trans woman, I, I, I did all this conscious performance in order to make my life easier as a trans feminine person because the better that you can imitate femininity or approximate the femininity that's displayed in your average, you know, stereotypical, you know, um, natal female, um, you know, the easier your life will be. And for some trans women, this all comes naturally. They're like kind of born with this natural predilection for femininity. But in my case, I had to learn this and to some extent it always remained a conscious performance like I was always sort of consciously aware of the fact that I'm kind of putting on a performance and you know to some extent that performance became natural over time and I didn't have to necessarily consciously think about it too much but nevertheless I always sort of knew in the back of my head that what I'm doing is a performance. It, it was an imitation. Um, and it was a sort of deliberate imitation um, in order to fit in and pass. And that is the key issue here in terms of like what drove me to detransition because I basically grew tired of having to put on a performance. I grew tired of having to always perform femininity um, in a way that did not come 100% natural. And this was one of the reasons why I did not like voice training. Um, I, I did a little bit of voice training, you know, particularly with respect to intonation patterns, but I did not change my resonance and pitch that much because, you know, maybe I just sucked at voice training. But in my opinion, when I attempted to change my natural resonance and pitch, my voice seemed a little inauthentic and unnatural. It kind of took on a uh, art of like a, an aspect of being an artifice. Um, and I did not like that. I, I did not like how fake it felt to put on this um, you know, feminized voice. I preferred my voice to be natural because I preferred the natural authenticity in retaining my natural resonance patterns because it felt better to do so. It felt more natural. And, and I liked being natural and authentic versus unnatural and inauthentic, even though that possibly led me to, you know, be, um, you know, t t to not pass as well. And, you know, so I would always get like, you know, um, clocked because of my voice. Um, even though like my appearance was fairly f feminine, I had a deeper voice and this would cause people to either, you know, clock me or misgender me or whatever. And, but I just kind of like accepted that because I thought the trade-off of being natural and authentic with my voice was better than, you know, trying to imitate this feminine voice but being um you know in inauthentic but what i'm driving at here is that a lot of my transition my femininity was a performance it was a gender performance now if, if you read you know classical gender theorists like Jen judith butler they'll say like all gender is to some extent a performance 
But what Butler meant there is not necessarily whether the performance is conscious or unconscious, it's just a performance. And, and performances can be unconscious or conscious. For some natal male, males who are naturally feminine from a very young age, often, you know, they're exclusively attracted to men and they have this kind of natural femininity. For them, their gender performance, you know, whether or not it comes from, you know, ultimately social construction or not, it's nevertheless an unconscious process. They don't have to think about it. It's never intentional. But for people like me, I had to consciously do the performance and that's the part that bothered me. And, you know, how does all this tie into the idea of, you know, detransitioning because society is intolerant? Well, what I'm getting at here is that, um, insofar as society was intolerant of me putting on women's clothing and long hair and makeup and kind of trying to look like a woman um, without doing the performance aspect, you know, society is intolerant of femininity in males, period. Whether or not you identify as trans or non-binary or whatever, or just a cross-dresser. Like, it doesn't really matter what you identify as. Society is intolerant of femininity in males. Like, anyone who has, like, it, like any male who has attempted to be feminine or, you know, expresses femininity, like, they will tell you, you know, that society is intolerant. It's highly policed among women, it's policed among men, you know, you get made of as, as a sissy, as a, you know, um, you know, all kinds of slurs, you know, get thrown at you. You're sort of like seen as like a, you know, a failed male, like a failed man, like, um, you know, you're sort of like a beta soy boy or whatever, or, you know, there's so many, you know, adjectives that one can use to describe feminine men. And almost none of them have positive connotations in our society. Um, the only, well, you know, and there's kind of an, an exception now because, you know, things like drag race are super popular, you know, but nevertheless, you know, feminine gay men will tell you that they have a hard time dating it in the gay world because, you know, there's such a strong preference for masculinity because masculinity as a man necessarily involves assimilation, better assimilation into society. Whereas if you're a feminine man, um, you know, it's harder to assimilate because you stick out. You sort of, you know, it, it's socially deviant behavior. Um, and you kind of like draw all this attention to yourself and a lot of it's negative attention. Even if you're just sort of, you know, have a natural preference for these things. But in my case, you know, um, I grew tired of putting on this performance, this gender performance. And it, I, I, I ultimately grew tired of the, in, the inauthenticity of trying to pass all the time and the sort of like social anxiety and self-consciousness that came from trying to do this performance all the time um, and the, you know, anxieties about, oh, well, how well am I performing? And, you know, and sort of always being on my guard because, you know, when I first met someone or if I'm in a new social situation, I would sort of, you know, the, the performance would kick into gear, you know, particularly with my voice and my mannerisms, I would kind of restrict my natural range to put on this performance of femininity. But then as I got comfortable with someone, you know, I kind of relax the performance a little bit and kind of be more natural and more authentic. And my voice pitch and resonance would like drop into a more natural resonance. But it's tiring to have to put on that performance all the time. Like I was always very conscious of, for example, like the angle at which I held my face or, you know, because of my Adam's apple. So if I'm like, drinking like a beverage like I, I would always like not want to be like this to drink um because of my adam's apples so i kind of like drink like this you know it's just li like little weird things like that but my gender performance had so much like self-consciousness around it that i just got tired of that now how this ties into social intolerance is 
one might say like, oh, well, if society was more accepting of trans people, then you wouldn't feel the need to put on this performance. But I don't think it's quite right to say that it's the intolerance of, tran of transness. Like it wasn't necessarily society being transphobic. It was society being intolerant of femininity in males. Like that is the key aspect because, you know, if I had, because my real desire was just to cross dress. I just loved women's clothing and I wanted to wear them all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, but in order to do that in a way that was socially acceptable, I had to kind of like try and like blend in and try and act like a normal woman, um, you know, to, to the extent that's like possible for me, which, you know, I never really did a great job of that. Um, but, you know, for me then, the like issue is not necessarily society being transphobic, it's society being intolerant of femininity in males. That is the more fundamental root cause. Um, and, you know, ultimately I just got tired of, you know, putting on this trans identity and trying to maintain the artifice of my feminine persona at all times and, you know, do this gender performance thing. So, you know, one might say that, yeah, I detransitioned because society was intolerant of trans people, but the honest truth is that it was because society, you know, necessitated the need to put on this gendered performance because otherwise, you know, cross-dressing in males is not well tolerated. So it doesn't really matter that I had a trans identity, like in, in, if anything, my trans identity, you know, brought a lot of positive reinforcement because a lot of, you know, people left of center are very supportive of trans people. You know, they, you're sort of like, you know, you, you, you get a lot of social support because, you know, trans people, um, you know, there's a lot of awareness about trans people and like, you know, Everyone wants to be like a good ally to trans people, at least, you know, liberals want to be good allies to trans people. So I, I got a lot of social support for being trans, um, you know, um, you know, but that didn't really matter because society, you know, just doesn't really like feminine males very much. Um, so, so and, and, and the fact that society does not like feminine males, you know, it necessitated me to try and hide the fact that I am male. And I tried to hide the fact that I'm male through this gendered performance in order to pass, to try and pass off myself as, you know, a natal female through the deliberate adoption of femininity and trying to you know, minimize and hide the fact that I'm male. Whereas, you know, if society was more tolerant of femininity in males, you know, I might have never found the need to adopt a feminine persona with, you know, a feminine name and she, her pronouns and, you know, this sort of like artificial feminine persona that I constructed. I would have just worn the clothes I wanted to wear, you know, wore the makeup I wanted to wear without necessarily feeling like I need to fit myself into a box and be inauthentic in my natural expression. And I could have just remained more authentic and natural in my presentation. Um, but the fact that s society is not there, um, you know, I, I ultimately detransitioned because I just got tired of being inauthentic all the time like i wanted to be authentic I, I was tired of putting on this performance i was tired of worrying about passing and passing politics and all the anxiety that comes with that and i just wanted to be natural in my behavior and my manners and then it turns out that it's easier to be natural for me you know as a male presenting person because because yeah, that is my natural inclination is like, I, I, I am a more naturally masculine person in my mannerisms and how I carry myself than I am 
a feminine person because that's just you know how I am and I just got tired of putting on the the, the performance um, so I wanted to say all this because you know I I wanted to um, complicate the narrative in terms of what it means to detransition because society is intolerant because I think we need to be like more careful and more precise about what exactly is society intolerant of? Is it intolerant of trans identity in and of itself? Or more fundamentally, is it intolerant of femininity in males? Um, and, you know, I do not deny that, you know, to some extent society is intolerant of trans identity in and of itself, you know, as trans identity. But, you know, for me in my own personal life, the more fundamental issue was the intolerance of femininity in males that drove me to adopt the trans identity, um, which allowed me, which created a shell um, that I, a placeholder that I used to interject my gender performance in order to pass and minimize the fact that I'm male. Because I didn't want to be seen as a feminine male I wanted to pass as a trans feminine person. Um, and even though I never adopted like the identity of a woman, I never like thought I was a woman, but I always was very conscious of the fact that I'm trans and I, you know, proudly embrace the fact that I'm trans feminine. You know, it was still like, you know, it, it was still hard for me to accept the fact that I'm male because I'd sort of internalized this message, you know, for, for so long that, you know, being a feminine male is a bad thing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to say there. Hopefully this made sense. Um, and, and again, I'm just speaking about my own personal experiences here. Um, so um, yeah, there you go. All right. Thanks. Bye.